Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday, September 27th, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. Well, we continue to track Invest 97L to the east of the Lesser Antilles, and this continues to approach, and sometime tomorrow, uh, we'll likely be passing through the Windward Islands here, uh, near or just north of Barbados. Uh, if we take a closer up look, uh, this really doesn't have a closed circulation yet. Uh, it seems like more like an open wave axis in here, some elongated uh, area of general turning. Uh, there is no closed low, as we can see from the recon plane earlier today. Uh, this really didn't find anything well-defined. Uh, light winds and a sharp uh, wave axis in here, but that's about it from the plane. And uh, this has been a pretty large wave from its initial birth, and so this is likely to take its time consolidating into a closed circulation. And again, although the Eastern Caribbean isn't really expected to preclude development at this time of year and with the, the current pattern we have, uh, it is still less favorable than other places like farther west or out here. So as the wave gets to the Eastern Caribbean, it may take its time uh, getting its act together. So we may still be dealing with a rather weak version of this for the next few days. However, it is still uh, highly anticipated to eventually develop during the next couple of days, and we could really see tropical depression or storm form at any time here going forward. Uh, as we look at the water vapor imagery, there is still uh, actually a little bit of shear over the system now. We have this upper level trough over the uh, Central Caribbean right now, so there's some southwesterly flow aloft, and this is pushing ever so slightly the thunderstorms off to the northeast of where the low-level wave axis is. And you can kind of see that on the visible here. The low-level turning is most pronounced in here, but you can see the mid-level turning to the eye is focused to the northeast. So there is a little bit of a decoupling between the mid-level low and where the surface low is going to try to form. And as we've talked about with Hermine and other storms this year, the decoupling uh, generally means the storm uh, still needs more time uh, to develop, and it needs vertical alignment in order to do that. Uh, this indicates that it still needs more time uh, before it can begin strengthening. Uh, but this wind shear is expected to lessen as the system comes west into the Caribbean. This trough is expected to erode, in part due to the outflow from the system's convection, and also because uh, of other, uh, other stuff going on to its west, which will eventually kick this out to the northeast. So as this comes in the Caribbean, its environment does get a little bit better aloft, again, still dealing with the fact that the trade winds do accelerate slightly in the central Caribbean. So you get divergence in the low levels in the eastern Caribbean, not nearly as bad as earlier in the season, but still enough that this may still have a hard time. In addition, you get dry air coming off of South America as well. The inflow coming up out of the south is usually pretty dry off of Venezuela, and considering this is going to take a pretty southerly track here, it may be close enough uh, that it, it has troubles. There is a mountain range along the coast, and so you can get down sloping. As the wind comes down off of the mountains, it dries out as it sinks, and then gets entrained into the storm's circulation and induces weakening, and that may be something that we see here as it tries to develop. That doesn't mean it won't necessarily strengthen in here, uh, but it may not do so very rapidly. That's just an educated guess at this point, uh, but it may be limited as it comes into the Eastern Caribbean. Perhaps later on, though, uh, conditions get even better for development, and we could see more rapid strengthening uh, later down the line. Now, as far as the system's future, it continues to be uh, an interesting problem in the longer range. Right now, this is the European showing, uh, again, by tomorrow, Wednesday, coming through the windwards, bringing perhaps tropical storm force gusts to some of these islands, especially on the north side, and then continues uh, westward into the Caribbean. You can see it's not very strong on the European. It's been pretty consistent on being weaker than the GFS in the short term, and for perhaps the reasons we just spoke of, uh, it may take its time strengthening in the eastern Caribbean. It may not be a rapid developer here. Uh, but, but by day three, we do see a bona fide tropical storm here in a west-southwest dip again in the track, which the Euro has been pretty consistent on, not quite as far south as the last couple of days, but still close enough to the islands here of Aruba, Curaçao, and Bonaire, the coast of Venezuela, and Colombia, that this, this region uh, near the north coast of South America should still keep an eye out for this system and any advisories from local weather offices in this region as this could get close enough to cause problems in a region that rarely sees this kind of weather. So this is still uh, worth keeping an eye on. And the GFS is in closer agreement with this position now on the European by day three. This is Friday morning. Uh, this has been getting a little bit more consistent on the European as far as timing goes. There was a little bit of a change in the forward speed of the storm. It's now moving a little bit faster in some of these forecasts. So even by Thursday, 
we could see it pretty close to some of these islands and by Friday morning it's here so Thursday and Friday we could see it getting close to this region and the GFS is uh, just a little bit farther north than the European now it's also stronger which may be one of the reasons it is farther north it doesn't dip southwest quite as much now in the longer term we still don't know uh, for certain what's going to happen with this after it gets to this point we know it's going to get to here after this point things become tricky here's the euro at 500 millibars out to day five on Sunday morning showing the storm here almost due south of Jamaica uh, this track is an extension of uh, where it comes uh, just west southwest near South America and then continues uh, to this point here this is a little bit farther west than some previous runs and then eventually here what happens is this ridge to the north has an edge to it the western edge is somewhere over the Bahamas here because of this lingering trough that tries to develop over the Gulf of Mexico there's a piece that leaves over the Ohio Valley and there's a piece that gets left behind over the Gulf and thus there is an edge uh, that is formed to this steering ridge to the north and thus there is a weakness into which the storm can eventually start moving northward into and uh, as of the last couple of days most models agree that some kind of turn to the north will occur somewhere due to this weakness in the ridge somewhere over the Bahamas but there are major disagreements over exactly where and when this turn may occur and you can start to see some major differences just at the day five point between the euro and the GFS which at the same time on Sunday morning has the storm here you can see the stark difference between the two storms locations and also intensities with the GFS being stronger and this matters a lot because if the GFS is correct and this is stronger it will be faster to turn to the north here and thus uh, able to take a track farther to the east perhaps over Hispaniola whereas the European is farther to the south and thus opens the door for a track farther west over say Jamaica and even Cuba uh, in the longer term uh, this is the primary difference between the two models right now the GFS has been consistently trending a little bit farther west with each run it was originally over the Dominican Republic and each run has been coming a little bit farther west over time and that's a trend that we're currently watching but it's currently not clear where the solutions will finally settle right now the European has been doing better in the short range and so it may it may have a better idea in general of where this will be uh, as it moves uh, near South America but after this point it becomes very hard to figure out where exactly this may track because steering currents get very slow uh, there is no very strong steering flow in here because this ridge is well to the north there is a weakness here but it's not uh, there's no giant trough coming down to get it because this isn't November and uh, this is down in the Caribbean very far south so there's only a minor subtle weaknesses uh, in the steering flow over the Gulf of Mexico and there are disagreements over how this trough will evolve you can see that on the GFS this trough is a little stronger this ridge is uh, ever so slightly further east than on the European which has a slightly farther west ridge and a weaker trough over the Gulf this combination would favor tracks more toward the west over time whereas the GFS pattern favors tracks more to the east over time this is still a major divide in the models right now and again right now the GFS is trending more toward the euro so there may be some more um, some more confidence that this is coming a little farther west than the GFS had it originally but there's still a large area in here that could be targeted and we're talking about day five day six even out to day eight and ten uh, where this could still be uh, uh, moving around because this is going to take forever to come up in a steering flow this week by day 10 the euro still only has it in this region here so it's barely leaving the Caribbean by eight days from now that's a long time and there are lots of errors in the models that can cause uh, uh, problems with the forecast and this is the European ensemble showing some of those uh, different possibilities that are showing up on the models this is something that I'll rarely show you but in this particular case there is a large area that could potentially be impacted and this is just to show you that right now the models generally agree on this track in the short term and we know uh, pretty much uh, for certain that it's going to get into the Central Caribbean somewhere here to the south of Hispaniola just off the coast of South America but after this point things become very cloudy uh, and there's a large envelope of possible track solutions here after day three and four and so the long-term track of this out to day 10 very very uncertain and it often is you're never going to find a day 10 forecast that is uh, for certain that's not going to happen 
So here, uh, there's a large variety of possible outcomes. And so we still have potential for Hispaniola to get threatened, the Bahamas, Florida, and the Gulf of Mexico, the United States, Mexico, Jamaica, Cuba, the Cayman Islands. All of these areas could potentially see 97L move in their direction in the longer term. And we have a long time to watch this. Remember, it takes five days for it to get here. Uh, we pretty much know it'll be somewhere in this region in the South Caribbean, but that's five days. And then after that, we have another five days beyond that during which it could be moving around in this area here. So this is really something uh, that will be watched for a long time and any potential threats to the Greater Antilles, the United States, or any other region here are still uh, several days away. So there's plenty of time to keep an eye on this, look for the forecast, have your hurricane plan ready, make sure you have all the supplies uh, that you might need in case this starts coming your direction. But there remains at this point a lot of time to figure out what that direction is. So we're just going to keep a close eye on this. Again, development possible any time now, and it will likely be bring tropical storm force wind gusts to portions of the Windward Islands tomorrow, along with heavy rains. And the northern coast of South America and some of these southern Caribbean islands may need to keep an eye on this for uh, the potential for uh, weather they don't normally see associated with a tropical cyclone. Uh, in the southern Caribbean and that may occur sometime on Thursday and Friday for this region here. That's the only uh, set of areas that we really know could be threatened by this in the short term. Any other areas that could be threatened in the long term still uns unsure and uh, continue uh, to monitor the forecasts as they will be changing over the course of the next few days. We won't know anything for sure for a little while yet so uh, keep an eye on the forecast. Alright that's it for today. Thanks for watching.